What's up guys, Safi on Super Saf TV and welcome to the much awaited Super Saf style camera comparison. This time between the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. You guys know the drill, we're gonna be testing out all aspects of the cameras, front facing, rear facing, video, audio, images, low light, everything. Look out for the audio icon in the corner of the screen. So we're using the front facing cameras at the moment, 4K, 30 frames a second. Let's see how it looks. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out uh, the stabilization in this wind. So, walking, now let's go ahead and run. We are gonna be testing out 4K at 60 frames a second. And let's see what stabilization is like. A rear facing video camera test. So initially we're starting at 4K. 30 frames a second. So, let's see what the dynamic range is like here. We're gonna test out the stabilization now. So, a bit of a walk. Well, let's go ahead and run. Now we can switch to the ultra wide camera while we're shooting. So, I'm not worried about our shot now. And now we're going to test out the stabilization with the ultra wide camera. We can also test out the zoom. So, we've got two times optical zoom. We've got five times optical zoom on the S20 Ultra. So we can get in a lot closer with the S20 Ultra compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Both cameras are also capable of uh, filming at uh, 4K 60 frames a second. So uh, let's just test out uh, stabilization at 4K 60. So. Run. Seriously, get a workout doing these camera comparisons, I'm telling you. Now for this test, we're gonna be testing out stabilization at 1080p. So we do have super steady on the S20 Ultra, which should help, so let's go ahead and run. Now, a new feature we've got in the S20 Ultra is 8K video. So we've switched to 8K video now. And we're at 4K on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, we do have quite a bit of a crop at 8K. That's something that I'm definitely noticing right now. But details should be a lot sharper now. I'm not sure if we've got stabilization at 8K, but let's go ahead and test it anyway. So walking. And we'll go ahead and run. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can crop in much further because this uh, video is at 4K. On the 8K footage, you can crop in a lot further. And hopefully see lots of detail. Just a quick low light video test. Some spooky sounds coming from here, seriously. Those of you interested, low light video. Testing out the autofocus on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Very, very fast. Same test on the S20 Ultra. And it is definitely slower. Yep takes a bit of time to focus in. So that was the video. Now, before we move on to images, a quick few things. Firstly, if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you won't miss any future Super Saf style camera comparisons. I cover all of the latest flagship devices here on the channel. And let's now look at what we're working with here 
on these two devices. So both of them have a similar camera setup, shall we say. We have a primary camera, we have an ultra wide camera, and then we have a telephoto camera, but there's many, many differences here. Uh, the ultra wide cameras are the same resolution, but we do have a lot more resolution on the S20 Ultra. The primary camera is 108 megapixels. Now you are gonna be shooting at default at 12 megapixels, and that's gonna allow you to combine nine pixels into one, and it's gonna give you better images. And it's also got an overall larger sensor size. The telephoto camera, once again, you do have a higher resolution, and it's also gonna give you much more optical zoom, five times optical zoom, and up to 100 times digital zoom. So this will be quite interesting. And also you have a time of flight camera on the S20 Ultra, which will help with depth information. And one final thing to mention is that all images that you see have been shot on automatic. I haven't tweaked any of the settings. There is a pro mode on the S20 Ultra if you're interested to check that out. I've also left the scene optimizer on. This is to replicate the experience most users will have. Let's get to the images. So first up, we've got an outdoor image from the primary camera and both doing really good here. We've got differences in color, but this is to be expected. Now on this particular image, I did shoot at 108 megapixels to show you guys what it's capable of. And if we do go in 100% on both images, you can see that we've got so much more detail on the S20 Ultra shot. So that's just a really, really good thing to have if you do wanna capture all of that detail. Now remember, the images will be best optimized for the software processing at 12 megapixels. And this is what the S20 Ultra is set at default. So going forward, we'll be sticking to 12 megapixels to get that best optimization. But just to show you the power of the 108 megapixels. Now, the other thing that we have on the S20 Ultra is that zoom. So if we do max out the zoom, the optical zoom, we've got two times on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, we've got up to five times on the S20 Ultra. You can see that we can get in much, much closer on the S20 Ultra. The iPhone 11 Pro Max does max out at 10 times digital zoom. And if we compare that to the hybrid zoom that we've got on the S20 Ultra, which uses both optical as well as digital zoom, you can see that we've got a much cleaner image. This sign is crisp and clear, whereas the iPhone 11 Pro Max, uh, because it doesn't have any more than two times optical zoom, uh, it is struggling quite a bit here. So very, very interesting to see this zoom. Now, having a look at this shot, we'll come back to the primary camera shot. But once again, if we look at the zoom, the max optical zoom, iPhone 11 Pro Max two times versus five times, once again, getting in much closer on the S20 Ultra. And on the S20 Ultra, you can go up to 100 times. This is at 30 times. Now 30 times, still producing some very usable images. We have maxed out at 10X on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that's interesting that you're still getting some good shots at 30 times. Now, Samsung have been calling this 100 times space zoom, and I'm gonna be real with you, at 100 times, you know, you're not really gonna be getting an image that you can share on social media or something like that. Yes, you can do it, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. And this may be useful in certain situations where, you know, you wanna read a sign that's very, very distant or something like that, but, on a practical level, I think 30X is the max where you're still gonna be able to get something somewhat usable. Anything above that is, yeah. Now let's rewind and go back to this image that was shot on the primary camera. Now I was deliberately shooting into the sun just to test out the dynamic range. And here, I have to give it to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. If you look at the highlight areas, those have been maintained similarly to what we've got on the S20 Ultra. But if you look in the shadow areas, then we've got more detail in those shadows compared to the S20 Ultra. So this is quite interesting. I do like the iPhone 11 Pro Max image here. Now, if we do use the ultra wide camera on both devices, once again, the dynamic range is much better on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The clouds are still maintained and we've still got details in the shadows. Whereas on the S20 Ultra, some of the cloud areas have been blown out and some of those shadows have been crushed. Now this is quite interesting because the Note 10 Plus had great dynamic range on the ultra wide camera. So I'm not sure why this is on the S20 Ultra. Maybe they need to release some more software updates, but uh, currently as it stands, 
the iPhone 11 Pro Max for the ultra wide is doing much better here. Now I wanted to test this out even further. So I went out again in a tricky dynamic range situation. And here, once again, from the primary cameras, uh, the iPhone 11 Pro Max doing better. There is a bit of haze from the sun, which uh, I'm not liking. So I would call this one a bit of a draw. But when we do switch to the ultra wide camera, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, once again, better dynamic range overall. And I do prefer this image from the iPhone 11 Pro Max uh, compared to that on the S20 Ultra. Right now, let's move on to some portraits. Obviously a mode that is very, very popular. And here, both devices doing really, really good. Uh, the edge detection is great. Colors generally are really good on both devices as well. A little bit here or there. What's interesting is if you look at the area in between my arm, this has been blurred on the S20 Ultra. It has not been on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, this should be thanks to the time of flight sensor. It's not a perfect blur. But nevertheless, it is there, whereas it's not on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, this portrait shot was shot at 2x, which is kind of the optimal, but both devices do allow you to shoot portraits at 1x. And here, again, both doing overall very, very good. Um, I'd say there's some differences in dynamic range. I do prefer the dynamic range on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, there's a bit more detail in the clouds in the background, whereas uh, there is a bit of blowout on the S20 Ultra. Also, if you look towards my jeans, uh, there's more detail there in the shadow areas of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. But once again, if you look at the area in between my arm, uh, the S20 Ultra has managed to blur that whereas the iPhone 11 Pro Max has not. Another portrait, once again at 2X, are both doing good. I do prefer the colors a little bit on the iPhone 11 Pro Max here, uh, whereas we're getting a bit of a yellow tint on the S20 Ultra. This time, both of them have missed that blur in between my arm, which is interesting, but nevertheless, both doing pretty good. Now, I really wanted to test out lighting in tricky situations, so this is in direct sunlight. And here, the iPhone 11 Pro Max doing much, much better. The S20 Ultra has really washed out my face. It's looking very yellow. Uh, there's also some highlights that have been blown out on my forehead, whereas the iPhone 11 Pro Max is doing a much, much better job in terms of the colors. And it's also managed to get that bit in between my arm this time. Now, if we do go over to the 1X portraits, uh, here, once again, colors, hands down, the iPhone 11 Pro Max wins it. But edge detection is better on the S20 Ultra. If you look at my hair, a lot of that has been cut. So I've been given a haircut by the iPhone 11 Pro Max, whereas the S20 Ultra has maintained that a lot better, as well as that section once again in between my arms. So it looks like the iPhone 11 Pro Max better with colors overall and the S20 Ultra better with edge detection thanks to the time of flight sensor. This is something that we've seen trend on between Apple and Samsung devices for a long time. Now let's move on to low light. I know a lot of you guys are interested in this section. So this picture was taken uh, with no fancy settings, just point and shoot and both not doing great here. However, as soon as we use the respective night modes on both devices, both are doing much, much better. The iPhone 11 Pro Max does have a brighter image, but I do prefer the S20 Ultra image overall. If we do go in 200%, you can see that we've got much less noise and the image is sharper on the S20 Ultra. That maybe is thanks to that larger sensor. Another low light image, uh, both doing good overall here. Uh, but if we do look closer, I once again do prefer the S20 Ultra image here. It's a tad sharper. Uh, some of the highlight areas where we've got those lights have been better maintained. And it's also got less noise overall at the image uh, compared to that on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Another low light image and both doing really, really good. Uh, but the S20 Ultra, more detail. If we especially look towards the tree area, uh, more details have been maintained there compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's also a cleaner image. And this is quite interesting because uh, the iPhone 11 Pro Max only did a three second night mode, whereas the S20 Ultra did something like an eight to 10 second night mode. So uh, you'd think that there'd be a bit more motion on the tree because of the wind, because of that longer time, but it looks like it's not only using a longer exposure, uh, it's also doing lots of other software magic, which is definitely working in its favor. And I do prefer the S20 Ultra here. Now using the max optical zoom in low light on both of these, both of these seem to be doing pretty decent. Uh, we can see this sign pretty clearly, and that is pretty good. Um, I can't really pick a winner between these because the zoom is so, so different between the two. However, when it comes to the ultra wide camera in low light, it's a clear win for the S20 Ultra. And that's because on the iPhone, for some reason, they do not have 
the night mode for the ultra wide camera. So uh, you're getting a very usable image on the S20 Ultra, whereas on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, this image, I mean, it's just not usable. You can barely see anything. So this is definitely something that I like to see on the iPhone 11 Pro Max going forward via maybe a software update. Now, a final low light image. So this was taken indoors in low light. The iPhone 11 Pro Max are actually a much brighter image, but it does have more noise compared to the S20 Ultra. And now let's move on to selfies. So initially this selfie, uh, both doing pretty good overall. I uh, can't really pick up much of a winner between these two. Now the S20 Ultra does have 40 megapixels from the front facing camera. At default, you're gonna be shooting at around 10 megapixels, once again, to get those four megapixels into one. And if we do switch to the 40 megapixel camera, if you look towards the background, you can see that you do lose some of that processing that you get at 10 megapixels. So that software processing, you're gonna be sacrificing a little bit of that when you shoot at 40 megapixels. But at 40 megapixels, of course, you're gonna be getting a lot more detail. So if we do crop in 100%, uh, you can see more of my pores uh, in my nose and you know you can see all the grays uh, in my beard. Uh, I'm not sure if you'd want that much detail but generally speaking you're going to be shooting at 10 megapixels but if you want you can shoot at 40. Now this image was taken indoors but with very good lighting coming in from outside. Uh, here I think both are doing really good overall However, the colors are off on both. So the iPhone 11 Pro Max is making me look a bit too orange, whereas the S20 Ultra is making me look a bit too white. So I'd say my actual skin color, as you can see here, is somewhere in between these two. Uh, but nevertheless, both are doing pretty good. And the iPhone 11 Pro Max is also a little bit wider compared to the S20 Ultra, which is interesting. Now, if you do use the portrait modes from the front facing cameras on both devices, both doing very, very good. Edge detection is really good. Once again, we do have that difference in color. Now there does seem to be a bit of smoothening happening on the S20 Ultra of the skin. Uh, this is despite beauty mode being turned off. So it seems to be something that's there by default, which personally I'm not a fan of. Uh, one thing that you do have to note is that on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, uh, it does crop in when you're taking this portrait. Uh, with the S20 Ultra, you do have the option of either having that crop in or you can also use the portrait mode uh, for the wider field of view. So although generally the iPhone 11 Pro Max is wider, it does not have an option for a wide selfie when you're doing portrait mode. Now, this is another shot that I took, and this is something that I did notice on the S20 Ultra, that it does tend to soften things up sometimes, especially when you've got tricky dynamic range. Uh, if you look towards my jacket, things are very soft, uh, whereas they are much sharper on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I also prefer the colors overall on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. However, the edges are better on the S20 Ultra. If you look towards my jacket, my hair, the cutout has been applied better on the S20 Ultra. So here, overall, I would prefer the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, and it's something that I did notice in terms of softness on the S20 Ultra's processing. Now, low light selfies. So here, it's a tricky one because the S20 Ultra is much brighter but it's also got this sort of yellow hue, which I really don't like. Um, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, not as bright, uh, but you know, you're getting much better colors. Now, both of these do have a front facing flash and here the S20 Ultra seems to be doing much better. Uh, it's a brighter image, it's sharper. I like the colors better. So the front facing flash, S20 Ultra doing much better here. Now, one thing that I didn't realize was that the S20 Ultra also has night mode from the front facing camera. So I thought, let me go ahead and test this out. So here's a shot uh, in darkness and uh, you know, iPhone 11 Pro Max, a little bit better in terms of colors, but uh, you do have a brighter image on the S20 Ultra, but then you can use the night mode from the front facing camera on the S20 Ultra, which does give you a much, much better result. However, I think in situations like this, it's probably better just to use the front facing flash, which uh, I think does a much better job Right, so that was a lot to get through. Now let's uh, talk about my conclusions. So I gotta say both of these have great overall cameras, both images and video done really well. And these are some of the best smartphones out there. But of course, there's certain areas where the S20 Ultra is better and there's certain areas where the iPhone 11 Pro Max is better and there's certain areas where I'd say it's pretty much a draw. So let's initially talk about images. I did think that the iPhone 11 Pro Max had better overall dynamic range. The S20 Ultra, more detail thanks to that 108 megapixel resolution. The S20 Ultra overall did have better low light images in my opinion. And that does seem thanks to that larger sensor size. 
and also the fact that you've got the ultra wide camera with night mode whereas on the iphone 11 pro max you know you can't really use the ultra wide camera in low light situations but in good lighting i did prefer the iphone 11 pro max's ultra wide camera thanks to the better dynamic range. Again, I'm not sure why this is on the S20 Ultra. Uh, I was expecting to be much better uh, coming from the Note 10 Plus. If you do want me to do a super SAS style camera comparison between the S20 Ultra and the Note 10 Plus, definitely let me know in the comments below. Now, when it comes to zoom, of course, it's a clear win for the S20 Ultra. You've got much better hardware here for zoom capabilities. So you're gonna be able to get in much, much closer to your subjects compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. For portraits, it's the typical story. Uh, it's been the same story for the past few generations. The iPhone with better colors for portraits, the Samsung with the better edge detection. So I think it's gonna come down to your personal preference. I'd call it a bit of a draw overall. Now, when it comes to video, this is where things are very, very interesting because you guys know that the iPhone 11 Pro Max is overall my favorite smartphone video camera. The S20 Ultra brings 8K to the table. Now, there's a few things to note about 8K. Yes, it's great to have and it's super sharp, but you know, you're not getting that same stabilization. It is giving you quite a heavy crop. So I think 8K will only be used in specific situations. Maybe if you're shooting on a tripod, maybe if you've got a gimbal or something like that, that's when I think the 8K is really gonna be useful. But when it came to 4K regular footage, I liked both of these. I think the iPhone 11 Pro Max was a bit more stable from what I could see at 4K. The S20 Ultra was more stable at 1080p because you do have super steady, but it was super soft as well. So you're getting super steady, but you're also getting super soft images. So I don't know, like, you know, it's nice to have that stabilization there, but uh, from what I saw, it was very, very soft, which I'm not a fan of. The iPhone 11 Pro Max had better autofocus. I think that was very, very clear. It was faster. Uh, something that, uh, you know, Samsung has been really, really good at with the dual pixel autofocus. I don't believe the S20 Ultra has dual pixel autofocus anymore, so uh, it's definitely slower compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. But the S20 Ultra I did find was better for low light video. So quite interesting, a few wins for the iPhone, a few wins for the S20 Ultra. For front facing video, however, I'm gonna have to give the edge to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, I think both were pretty good in terms of dynamic range, but the iPhone 11 Pro Max was a little bit wider and it was also stable throughout, even at 4K 60 frames a second. You do not have stabilization at 4K 60 frames a second on the S20 Ultra. For selfies, now I'd say it's a bit of a draw overall. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is wider, but as soon as you go into portraits, then it's not as wide anymore. The S20 Ultra is wider. The S20 Ultra, you do have more resolution, but in certain situations, it can be very, very soft. And for colors, I'd say it's neither here or there. Um, the iPhone made me look a bit too orange. The S20 Ultra made me look a bit too white. So I'd say it's uh, kind of in between there. For audio, um, I'd say it's a bit of a draw as well. I'd let you go back and have a detailed listen, but I listened a few times and I think the audio is great on both devices. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? Be sure to drop a comment below. Let me know which one you preferred overall. Now, if you wanna see images shot on lots of different devices, then be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm at SuperSaf. I post very, very regularly on there. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel here, be sure to do that and hit that bell icon. That way you won't miss any future Super SAS style coverage. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As you know, these camera comparisons take a very, very long time to make. So a thumbs up for that would be appreciated. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super SAF TV. And I still have to edit this thing. Man, that's gonna be a mission. <laughs> I'll see you next time.